What's up guys, Axis and Alloys back here. We're playing Axis and Allies 1941. Should be a hopefully quick game. Uh, a very basic version of Axis and Allies. I'm um, using my global 40 pieces because some of the, uh, they really don't give you enough uh, pieces and chips for this game. Should be a fun game. Looking forward to walking you guys through it. Um, so yeah, let's get right into the action and I'll catch up with you at the end of round one. We just concluded round one. Let's break it down. Russia went into West Russia, suffering no casualties. Same with Manchuria. Germany fought back, took Karelia with the guys from Norway, swept into West Russia, and um, uh, they um, defended the Ukraine as well from Russia. Um, uh, Germany also took a couple of naval boats and um, Egypt. Uh, the UK tried to come back here with a failed attack on Thailand. Um, they were able to take Norway, Finland successfully. Um, Japan took India, consolidated some troops, and is mounting up against the United States. The United States brought everything in into Hawaii to posture against the Japanese, calling their bluff. They also brought in a bomber to the UK, built some destroyers, and took a German sub out. Losing a destroyer, but well worth it to clear the seas. If I'm the U.S. right here, I need to get the Atlantic Ocean open. We need to start sending troops to Europe as soon as possible, get the Brits involved as well. Russia, um, they're going to be able to pull back here um, and send some guys back to Moscow, but it might be too too little too late. Um, Japan and Germany got some really good roles, and I've noticed for both sides, um, they'll take a territory with like no casualties, and then the next territory they'll get stuffed. Um, so it's been it's been up and down, but with India in uh, Japanese hands, um, this may be the game already. But that's how it rolls with 1941. Normally, after the first turn, you can pretty accurately call it if you're dealing with experienced players. So uh, I appreciate all of you for tuning in. Let's see what happens at the end. Bum, 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 bum. Round two. We have just wrapped up round two. Um, Moscow has fallen. Germany is now in possession of all of the Russian money. UK is trying to hold together its empire, building up some troops um, on the island. USA same bulking up. Germany uh, making some money moves down in Africa. Japan seizing more assets, taking India, securing China, securing Australia. USA sub bought back, took a Yabe sub. Uh, the USA has Decided to hunker in the bunker for a little bit um, as Japan and them were standing off. Japan bought some subs. USA realizes it needs to spend more Navy here. Um, but prior, priority number one for the United States is not to lose its homeland. So obviously it's going to build up infantry. Uh, makes sense to me. But um, Japan is in a position of power here. Looking like an Axis victory. Obviously we'll play it out. Try to hit some victory conditions here. Um, but... I think it's it's pretty clear to tell uh, the Axis are winning this game. Um, so I'll play out till round five here. Um, and if, if it's going really, really strong Axis, we'll, uh, we'll call it. But, you know, anything can happen. Um, I've seen some pretty amazing comebacks in my day. So I'll see you all at the end of round three of Axis and Allies, 1941. Round three just wrapped up. Germany has strengthened their hold over Russia, taking out the Caucasus, building up for a campaign against Norway, Finland. The UK pulled back some troops to the island and is starting to build up. USA moving their fleet out into eastern Canada. Germany has also secured all of Africa um, and has made some money moves with their navy over there. Uh, Japan has taken the Middle East and the Eastern Indies, or West, yes, East Indies. Um, taking out the United States submarine in 33, moving two subs down to 39, um, moving a tank to Manchuria, building a transport sub, USA building two destroyers to counter there as well. Uh, we're looking uh, forward to a naval standoff here uh, with hopefully a big battle to conclude. Right now the USA is still making more money. That's soon to change with the fall of Borneo, Philippines, or Hawaii. So... Very curious to see what Japan and the United States do here. Um, obviously, I'm leaning Japan here. I think they're probably going to win this. Um, I'd like to see the USA pull out kind of an upset story, but the way things are going in Germany, Germany is going to be getting ready for a sea lion most likely, um, because if they do a sea lion, 
they uh they win the game there so they need to take a need to take good old uh, london or washington um what's going to happen earlier it's probably going to be london so japan is just trying to buy their time and um uh, distract the americans from from helping out uh the uk um, again games leaning pretty axis here at the end of round three um but especially when the dice rolls have been this kind of crazy um and you know everyone involved knows how to play um the game's probably gonna skew a little axis so keep watching i'll see you at the end of round four Round four has just concluded. Let's break it down here. Just going over incomes here to give you a rough idea. Germany at 16, UK at six, Japan banked 15, so they got 31, USA at 19. We have the USA sending as many troops as they can to go help defend the home islands here of the United Kingdom. Um, Germany has consolidated, taken out all of Russia um, and re-secured Norway, Finland. They uh, moving their guys, consolidating in Northern Africa. Japan is working on taking out the islands, taking Philippines, taking Borneo. For Japan, every island, every IPC helps. I know in this game, one IPC seems like nothing, but taking Australia, getting that extra one IPC, uh, it does go a long way. It does make a difference, um, just considering how, how little IPCs there are. Sure, in a game like 40 or any of historical board gaming's uh, products, you might not really care about one IPC, but in this game you do. Uh, they decided to move the fleet there, uh, but pull the subs back at home. USA did build the carrier. Looks like they're going to try to put some fighters on there, um, because they need to do something. They need to act um, uh, Japan. They need to strike while the iron's hot. The USA just needs to keep on churning out units and figure out a way to uh, to, to win here. They, need, uh, they really need to carry put the, the brunt of the allied forces on their backs, and we're gonna see if they can do that here. I don't know if they can, but we'll see how long they can hold out at least. Well, thanks for watching the end of round four. I'll see you in round five. Round five is just wrapped up. United States, uh, to, uh, their transports were taken out near the UK. Uh, they then killed the submarines there and with their destroyer, UK, uh, moving their transports back, trying to bulk up the island again, as I've already stated. Uh, Germany trying to get a navy going on, trying to get some sort of fleet here. Uh, center of the board, not doing too much. Um, Hawaii was taken. Um, if you follow the Axis and Alloways Instagram, which I'll link below, um, you'll be able to catch some updates in live time. You'll see, uh, you'd be the first to know that Hawaii was taken here by the Japanese. Uh, they did not lose a unit, and the United States built three infantry and a fighter to help combat this. Uh, Japan built a battleship, transport, and infantry here. Um, the standoff is getting increasingly uh, more hostile, and honestly, maybe the Japanese will be able to take Washington before Germany can get anything going here. Um, but I know for sure that their navy will be able to pre prevail here. Um, because I, I think that the amount of forces they have is just, uh, it's just superior. Um, although they have the same amount of carriers and fighters, uh, Japan has an extra battleship. Um, they also have an extra destroyer and three extra subs on the board. So, round five is in the books. I will see you all at the end of round six. Hey, hey, just finished round six. We're going to break it down. Near Britain is alone. Uh, the German Air Force lost a fighter taking out a USA destroyer, but Britain can only hope to build some, some infantry every turn as they wait out a potential German invasion. Germany building a battleship and two subs. Forgot to realize that in this game, battleships only cost 16, not 20. I might have made that error for a power early in the game. We now have Japan building a transport to get some of their, their men off of the Australian continent. We're in the process of a military buildup here. Japan is probably going to strike next turn. Uh, they might not be able to take out the United States and San Francisco, but regardless, they'll still be able to make a dent in their navy. 
Uh, Japan uh, banked a lot of money. They have 28 to spend for next turn. Germany 20, UK 5, USA 16. Um, not really much else is happening. They moved some guys down from Norway to Karelia. Um, and that's about it. They moved the Gibraltar guys to Europe. When the Allies don't have a lot of room to, to move, there's really not much they can do. There's only two Allied powers alive in this game currently, and both of them are hunkering in the bunker. So we'll see what happens right now. This was the end of round six. I'll see you at the end of round five. See you there. Round seven has just wrapped up down here. Germany made additions to the fleet. Japan easily wiped out the American Navy. I think they lost some subs and destroyers and that's about it. Uh, so now they have quite a substantial Navy here um, with no challenge in the Pacific. Uh, and hopefully Japan will be able to, uh, to get some moves made against them uh, in the future here. Uh, both Axis powers just need to kind of uh, perfect the art of a naval invasion here. I think that the UK will probably be the first to fall, though, judging by their uh, lesser income. So because of that, uh, that is my prediction there. But um, I will see you guys at the end of the next round. Round 8 is done. Japan has made landfall in Alaska, still encircling the United States. With the, the recent capture of Brazil, the United States is placing infantry every turn. Germany has bought a tank and a fighter here. Uh, they're going to start placing down some transports so that way they can get boots on the ground, start chipping away at that UK advantage. See you all at the end of round nine. Bada bing, bada boom. Round nine has completed Japan taking eastern Canada. Uh, the United States took out their transport there. Uh, Germany buying some transports, Alaska getting fortified up, Japan buying some more units to complete a ground invasion. Uh, this is the end of round nine. I'm going to let you guys know what happens in a couple more rounds, just because the next couple updates are probably just going to be the same thing. This country bought this many units. This is where they went. So uh, because of limited action, this is round nine. I'll let you guys know in a couple rounds. Take care. I'll see you at the end of round 10, 11, 12. Could be longer. And just like that, the game is over. And uh, well, middle of round 16, really. Uh, the reason why we're calling it, uh, this turn, Germany attempted a sea line. They ended with 5, 8, 9, 10, 11 tanks, 4 infantry, 3 fighters, and a bomber. Uh, the reason why we're ending it in the middle is because it doesn't really matter what the United States does. Germany's going to hold it. Uh, the UK is gone, therefore IPCs went to Germany. Um, Japan can really do anything here. They could could have sent those troops into Western Canada, and I could have played till the end of the round, um, you know, just to make Japan look better, but I decided not to do that. We're calling it here. Um, the United States has got plenty of troops on the homeland, but um, they weren't able to get those over to the United Kingdom, and they weren't able to get those over to help Russia out. A lot of easy rolls for the Axis at the beginning of the game. They got pretty lucky. Um, but 16 turns later, they couldn't get anything going, and so that's just how it's going to have to be. Um, I mean, the United States ended with four in Canada. They ended with, you know, a substantial, substantial pile, a uh, tank and a fighter. Here, they ended with a bunch of tanks and a um, bunch of infantry as well. But, you know, it just wasn't enough. It was a little too little, too late. Um... So, this concludes my uh, Axis and Allies 1941 solo game. Hopefully this gave you guys some level of enjoyment. Um, I love putting these out for y'all. Um, and I should have more, more content coming in the future. I'm currently in the middle of a global 1940 game right now with some buddies. So, hopefully we can get that wrapped up. I'm not sure how long that's going to take. I probably will just post round by round on the, uh, the channel just to give you guys something to, to latch on to. Um, I'll have the uh, Axis and Alloys Instagram linked below as well so that way you guys can keep up with the latest with Axis and Alloys and see what kind of, uh, what kind of battles and movements are taking place uh, that haven't made it to the channel yet. Well, regardless, uh, whenever you're watching this, hope you have a uh, great rest of your day. Um, stay safe, take care. This is Axis and Alloys. 
Sign off.